Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to something that's a little bit different for this channel, Risk of Rain. Uh, it's a game that's kind of hard to explain without being in the game itself, or like actually playing. Uh, so I'll explain more as we go. Um, but I'm certainly not amazing at the game, so if you are familiar with the game, don't expect to like really learn anything from me. <laughs> uh, I've unlocked a few things in it, but not certainly not everything. Uh, and I only have like seven hours total in the game, six of which were over the past couple days, basically. So uh, there's three different characters. Well, I mean, sorry, there's, there's way more than three characters. We have unlocked three different characters uh, that all have unique abilities. I'm not going to um, read them all, but I'll just select them and you can pause and read the abilities if you so desire. And then we'll pick one. Uh, I think now when I play co-op with my friend, I usually go Enforcer and then he'll go sort of a longer range character. Although I found that Enforcer has a lot of trouble with a couple of the bosses and a couple enemy types, so we're not going to pick him. We want someone who can kind of do it all, and that is the Commando. He's a really good utility, decent damage, long range, uh, has tactical dive which makes him invulnerable to all damage, I'm pretty sure, while doing it. Uh, we're going to be going normal difficulty, or brainstorm I guess, with two artifacts, the Enigma, the only two that we have unlocked. The Enigma, which makes our use item have a random effect and gives us a use item right off the bat, basically and command which items are no longer random. This is incredibly useful from what I've seen because uh, it basically takes a huge random variety, a random element out of the game and allows you to sort of pick what items you get from chests. It's really good. Like it, you, you're still limited by quality of the item, but if you're, if the chest were to drop like a green quality item, it would see that and then just let you pick any green quality item that you've unlocked, which is really cool. Alright, it's so, uh well on level one I try to find the teleporter as fast as possible because the enemies don't do too much damage yet, so I'm not oh and we found it like right off the bat. Wow, I was really close to the entrance. Uh just because the enemies don't do too much damage, so we can we can probably take it. <laughs> Wandering Vagrant, that's probably the worst boss we could have gotten. I really don't like this jellyfish dude. He's really annoying. Let's see. If I go quiet it's just because I'm concentrating, so. That was a nice item to get. See if we can lead him back to these. Does he actually not damage us? Oh, he actually does not damage us. Okay, I did not even know that. We just have to uh, avoid those little orbies. So we can actually just stand here and fight him. That's actually really good to know. <laughs> Learning as we go. Got hit by a couple of those, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna have to start being a bit more careful because uh, some enemies spawned on this platform. But if we actually just sort of hop... We, oh, no. <laughs> that was not very good. Okay, trying this again. Uh, the, the levels are pretty random. There's... At, for certain parts of the game, depending on what level you're on, there's certain, like, pre-made maps you'll get put on. Or, like, pre-themed uh, maps. Like, you'll always get put on, like, a forest map or another similar map. Uh, for level 1 and level 2 and so on. And like higher end maps have different uh, categories you might get. At least from what I've seen. I, I could be entirely wrong. I'm not sure. But just in my limited experience that seems to be the case. Uh, there's nothing up here. There is a little container though. So we'll just pop that get some experience and a couple gold. Because we want to be able to open up all the chests that we po uh, possibly can. Oh, hello there little golem dude. and use our random item. Okay, that was a little like voodoo doll thing. It does a little bit of damage to us, I think, but it does like a ton of damage to all the enemies on the screen or something like that. Again, I'm not super familiar with this game and I am using the, the random item or the random use item artifact, which I probably shouldn't. Like it's good, but I should know what like all the things do so I know what to expect. I don't want to push that guy off the edge, because then we'd have to go back down there to kill him. Okay, so we know nothing's to the right, which is good. We have a decent amount of money, too, so we can open up a chest or two, depending on uh, what kinds we encounter. Certain enemies have a hard time going up and down steps, so we'd like to take advantage of that. Like, these guys can't go up or down. Uh, we're probably going to go up there and join them. 
uh, just because it's faster than trying to just keep popping and shooting them. <laughs> if they fall down, that's fine, because we can still shoot their heads because they're taller enemies. There's another guy over there, but there's no point in trying to go after every single enemy because they'll keep respawning until, uh, until you complete the teleporter, I'm pretty sure. Or the teleporter event. Which is not just killing the boss. It summons the boss, but that's not the only thing to it. Because you have to survive for 90 seconds, and then after the 90 seconds are done, you have to kill all remaining enemies. And here's an imp's thing, which is actually pretty good. This is a good spot for it, it looks like. Okay. Yeah, we were able to do this pretty easily. Okay, good. Opens up a chest for us. We're going to take... Um, let's get the, the money early on, because having that, that life savings is pretty good. It just gives us a small amount of gold over time. Ooh, uh, a monster log. Very nice. Alright, we're going to do this again. Alright, they're all going this way, which is pretty good, because we can just use our little laser ability and get them all. And for this one, we're going to take some health regen. Oop. Items do stack, so we totally could take uh, like two of the same item if we wanted to, but we don't want to. Oop, I don't remember what these do. Chance to do double damage? Yeah, sure, why not? I guess it's like a chance for a crit, but it's not. Uh, you don't get the, the perk crits, I don't think. Because it doesn't specify specifically that it has a higher chance to do a crit. Yeah, certain items you get will like, uh, like, you know, you can heal when you do crits, or you can do like 100% crit chance to low health enemies and a bunch of other things. You know, a green item, okay. Let's, uh, what do I usually get here? Let's get the higher jumps before we die. That's the one downside of that, uh, thing is that you have to take time to pick out your item, so if you're surrounded by enemies, you can't just swing by and pick it up, unless I guess you're really quick and know exactly what you want and where it is on the, uh, on the little board there. As for length of these episodes, I'm not really sure. Um, they'll probably be somewhat lengthy. Basically, however, you know, if I can just get, you know, a good run in, however long that run ends up being, uh, that's, that's what we'll do. Where is the darn teleporter? We do have enough money to get the next, uh, that, that other 50 gold chest up there. Okay. Go ahead and grab that. And that rocket pack we got allows us to jump up a little bit higher, which can actually be kind of useful sometimes. Uh, we could get another rocket pack, but I don't really want to. Um, I've been experimenting with this, trying to figure out what all the item different items do. I'm not sure what this does. Killing oh, it's infusion. Okay. It's just whenever we kill an enemy, we get a little bit more maximum health, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure how much, so let's find out, or, or if it varies like by enemy. So we're at 270 at the moment. Oh good, we got the uh, the voodoo doll thing. 72, 73. Okay, so it looks like about one health per enemy, regardless of difficulty. Although I guess we'll see once we kill this guy. Oh well, we got a level up there too, but I saw us get to uh, 276. So yeah, it looks like just one health, which is still fine. It's pretty good, because we end up killing a lot of enemies, so we can get a lot of health from it. Once we got it fairly early on. So I think my high score for like enemies killed is like 370 or something, so that's... I mean, if we could do that again, that'd be nice. Although I think that was with an Enforcer run, so I don't know. The Enforcer has some pretty good strats for survivability, which is nice. Oh gosh. Whoops. <laughs> was not paying attention to my health. Alright, so we are back at level 2. This time we got the Damp Caverns. Hopefully we'll have a little bit better luck this time. Uh, I also forgot to mention that when you go through the teleporter to the next level, you lose all your money, so it's good to try to spend it, as much of it as you can. Although it's not a complete waste if you don't, because it does get converted into experience. Um, but in my opinion, I think it's, it's still definitely better to get as many items as possible. Since, you know, you can get experience by killing enemies, but uh, getting items is a little bit harder. These guys are really tough. We might die again. Please no die. 
Fortunately, we have a little drone that's healing us, which is probably the only reason why we're still alive right now. Okay, there we go. Yeah, if you've ever seen an enemy that has a white outlined health bar, it means they're sort of like an elite version of the normal enemy type. Oh gosh. Okay. Fortunately, they seem to be synchronized together, so we can just jump to avoid those guys' attack. Uh, these guys sort of fire like a, a straight line. That's pretty annoying. It passes through everything except for like terrain, basically. And it does a little. It's not a huge amount of damage, but it is still. You know, you, you don't want to. You don't want to be hit by it. <laughs> I need to utilize my roll a little bit more. Alright, we got... Using our random power-up buff, we got a, a leech thing, so we, every time we deal damage, we get 10 health back, so we can just do this, since we basically attack so fast, until that little red bar runs out, like it just did. Oh gosh. Okay, let's... <laughs> just, you know, roll through poison gas, that means you don't get hit by it, right? Yeah. That's totally legit. Man. Now, this game can be kind of tedious at times, not, not in a bad way, just... Just you have to just you know jump back and forth like I'm doing here, although it's still exciting and fun, so I'm not not complaining at all. Okay, we got those elites taken care of. Let's kill this this poison cloud guy. This so could prove to be a problem. And he's gone. Oh, there's so many enemies down here. I just like this is still just the same little area we entered in. Yeah, let's. Oh, I was trying to push this the poison mushroom guy down so we could get them all in the same little area. And let's use our item again. Oh, that dropped a little money bomb thing. It explodes into gold. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's try to buy this real quick. Alright, this is a green quality item. Let's get... I think this is the one we want? This is the one that makes enemies drop more enemy? No, okay, never mind. This is a, a shield that regenerates out of combat. And I'm still learning this game. There's a few items that I know that I want, but other ones I just need to memorize all the icons, basically. Uh, we our best bet would actually probably just be to leave, <laughs> because uh, we could be down there all day since the teleporter is not activated yet, and the result just keeps spawning in forever. Let's kill this guy before he drops a cloud on us. Uh, some health for us. Very nice. Oh, that's terrain right there. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over that. Good. good. Let's die, please, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, froze time. Uh, there we go. Now we can hit that little lizard dude. I don't know all the enemies' names. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're doing pretty well. Uh, the difficulty, as you can see on the upper right, is climbing up pretty slowly. Uh, but it is ever-increasing. There's no way, at least that I'm aware of, to stop it or slow it or anything. Oh, there's the teleporter. Now, with any luck, we'll either get the, um, the big old golem dude or the magmorum, I think, would be okay as well. Actually, pretty much any boss would be okay, except for the, the jellyfish. Okay, Magma Worm. If you've, ever, if you've ever played Terraria, you'll probably understand the mechanics of this boss. <laughs> Same thing as the Destroyer of Worlds. More or less. Except it's fire, instead of corruption or whatever. Except, fortunately, this boss, like, you don't need to defeat all of his separate parts. You can just kill it, and it's okay. Oh gosh, I'm about to die. Oh, this, yep, there we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, this game kind of taunts you uh, after death, too. So let's try playing Drizzle for an easier time. Well, Drizzle's the easy, basically the, the easiest difficulty. Uh, but your progress isn't saved, so you can unlock stuff, but when you restart the game, it goes away. So I haven't been doing it at all. Uh, so this is a bit of a shorter video, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of this. It is pretty fun. I'll be playing it a lot off camera for sure, but I may end up recording some more as well. Uh, again, if I get any feedback about that. Uh, so with all that being said, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.